This is a part two video of the most important core support you can do during pregnancy and postpartum. Now the first video was just telling you the basic diaphragmatic core breath that is just at the foundation of what I'm about to show you, okay? But this is a little ensemble that I do. Just, I just do it in the afternoon every day that I can during pregnancy and for the first eight weeks postpartum. It's the most important part. I wouldn't jump into any exercise until you've spent a good couple of months doing these exercises because they're really going to retrain your inner core to fire properly because if we do a bunch of circus moves straight after like four weeks you know after pregnancy and we're like back into aerobics that's crazy because our, during pregnancy we can kind of become detached to our inner core and it can start to fire um, in the wrong way and, uh, and, and be delayed in firing properly and so the other bigger muscles can take over and then you're left with this core that's not even participating in the moves properly anymore. So really got to start foundationally with the inner core first postpartum and hey what's better than doing it throughout your whole pregnancy maintaining a tight core and then not having much to you know much uh, strength to regain because you've really kept a strong um, in a core during your pregnancy. So this is the little ensemble. First of all, I showed you in the first video the um, core breath, but you can do that core breath on the ball. I did it on the floor in like an Indian sitting style, but you can do it on the ball. So you could do just a, a minute or so of those diaphragmatic breaths where you inhale and let the breath fill the barrel that I described in that first video and then exhale and lift up and in the pelvic floor and let those corset muscles just tighten everything up. Okay and so you do that for a little while and then you do little leg lifts. When you're sitting here with your perky posture you can actually know if you're sitting right. If your ball has your knees in a 90 degree angle or just a little bit higher, you don't want to be sitting so that your knees are up then you've got a ball that's too small. This, a ball that actually puts you at 90 degrees with your legs or a little bit higher, puts you in that optimal alignment and you can actually spread your little bum apart if you want, sorry, but you can sit on your sits bones and when you sit on your sits bones uh, then you, you realize that you're sitting in the right, you don't right position because it's not perky posture if you're sitting on your tailbone you want to feel your sits bones okay so you're sitting in this alignment you've done your core breathing and now you just do a little bit of marching and every time you lift your leg you do a little secure breath let those corset muscles just tighten everything up secure 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 and I just do that for maybe just 15 to 20 times and then I go straight into after that I go straight into one of the legs out like that and then I put some arms into it so it's a little if, and if you find this hard at all then you can hold on to your ball or shove your ball near the corner of a wall so there's, it's not so wobbly and then you can do your other leg and you can find that this next movement here is a lot of work. There's never really that rest point where you can let everything unsecure. So what you do there is you secure everything up and then you just breathe into your intercostal muscles. Breathe just in your rib cage so that all this here, your transverse abdominal muscles and your pelvic floor maintain that secure. So you're maintaining the secure, secure the whole time. So you did this leg and that leg. Now if this becomes painful at all with pubic symphysis pain or uh, any kind of pain at the end of pregnancy, just leave it off. As soon as you get uncomfortable, stop. And then after that we have, you don't want to see me do this. Um, <laughs> I don't have to see me doing this because obviously I'm not looking at me so I'm going to only just I'm going to explain it and just do it a few because it's kind of belly dancing on a ball but you want to keep your whole pelvis and your whole hip regions during pregnancy and postpartum very fluid you want to keep it uh, very loose so that uh, I need to start that again because I want to say the right word and loose sounds bad and perverted uh, I want to choose a good word. Very um, fluid is good. Very yeah. relaxed. Mm -hmm. I'll just say very fluid. Can we, we stop there? 
because you want to keep your whole pelvis region um, very fluid at the same time as being strong but you don't want an overly tense uh, in a core that doesn't know how to relax too. You want to be able to have a balance of having a having a toned inner core uh, and, and an aligned pelvis but not one that's fixed in a constant state of tensity that doesn't know how to relax. It's very important to know how to relax your pelvic floor and secure it and it's very important to have a, a good alignment that knows how to to be able to be fluid and not stiff because the stiff um, posture can be can be dangerous okay so especially when you're preparing for birth and during pregnancy so during pregnancy I like to do these little belly dancing moves so I just put my hands out like this and I just tick tock the clock I don't move my upper body at all and I'm in a secure state and at every tick I secure a little bit more and I'm securing and then you can go forward and back and you don't move your upper chest you just move your lower um, lower abs and your pelvis and then you can just go to the right and you're basically just keeping everything fluid. This, this puts um, your body in just a really incredible fluid and tone state. Fluid and tone, that perfect balance for birth. It's excellent. Being in a perky posture, um, having, um, learning the right diaphragmatic breathing and keeping everything fluid and toned is a perfect way to put your body and uh, your baby in the right position for birth. So that was it. Just a little ensemble of three things and I just try and do them every day. And then if you want to add a fourth, you can get a little a stretchy um, long band. We have them in our workings book and you just pull it apart when you do the marching. So that's the second stage of that marching move I showed you at the beginning. And that really strengthens your upper back too, so that you're not a roundy, shouldery person during um, breastfeeding. You can do this postpartum, it's really good so that you don't become one of those people. Yeah, I think we call it Anxious Anne in our workers' program, you're just kind of like all bent over. So that's it. So I just wanted to take one little minute to just tell you how I ease back into our workings program postpartum. So basically I just start the next day with a diaphragmatic breath, the one I taught you in the first video, and I do that for just like a week. Nothing else but resting, feeding my baby, eating, enjoying life and doing diaphragmatic breath and just trying to keep a, as good a posture as I can and also allowing myself to just really relax on the couch when I want to too. Um, but then at about week two, I start adding that ensemble back in, just one exercise at a time. You don't want to over challenge your body. And then just slowly adding it until I'm doing all of those three or four moves that I showed you. And then by week three, I might start doing gentle walks. Never before week three. Never before week three do I start walking around the block. I walk around my house before that and do housework. But by week three, I can do gentle walks. And then after week three, I'm doing my ensemble in a gentle week, gentle walk, you know, whenever I feel like it. And then slowly towards the eight week mark, which is when I start my work ins, I take those foundational moves like squats or lunges or the hip lift bridge that you'll see. Um, it's all shown in our work ins program. And um, I will just start to do the diaphragmatic breath along with the squats. So I will be like, Inhale, open everything up and, and secure the whole diaphragmatic breath with the movement. So I learn to fire my core with the movement and maybe a uh, the uh, squats will be fine for a week and then I'll do the lunges and I'll do it with a diaphragmatic breath. And so, and then maybe the hip lift bridge. And so when I start the work-ins at eight weeks, my core has been trained to fire first. That's all I do.